I'm feeling so good today and I have such good news. Yellowstone episode 10 of season 4 got released. The final episode of that season, I think. It was so good. It was so good. Watched it last night yet. Stayed up a little bit late to get her in, but worth it. We're on our way into work again today. Uh, pretty much doing the same thing we did yesterday. We're going to grab unit 3099. That's that Peterbilt 579. We're going to get her warmed up. I got to grab a roll tight trailer <clears throat> and head up to uh, head up to Toulon, grab some freight. That's headed down to the States. But man, if you haven't seen Yellowstone yet, it's a really good series. She's running. That's good. Block heater's working. This truck actually has a bunk heater in there too. Well, all the highway trucks have bunk heaters as far as I know. And uh, it's very handy because on a day like today, I can warm that cab up a whole lot faster because not only is the engine, like once it warms up, not only is that going to warm up the cab like by turning up the heat, that bunk heater will start blowing heat a lot sooner. That's filling that cab with nice warm air so I'll be able to get going a little sooner. I like that. Very handy to have. If you have a highway truck, you always want to have a bunk heater. It's better to have an APU that also does air conditioning and also warms the coolant, but those are about $12,000. Bunk heater is, uh, it runs off very little, very little energy. So you can run it all night usually. They say a bunk heater uses about as much energy as leaving like, uh, like an LED tail light on all night. It uses about the same same power so you should be able to turn your truck over in the morning as long as it's not too cold outside but when it's this cold minus 27 you don't want to shut your truck off at night eight hours if you don't have this thing plugged in you're not starting that thing you're not turning that engine over <laughs> you gotta have it plugged in or keep it running all night so all these trucks along the fence here all the way back there and all the way around uh uh, we got our trailers here, but we got more trucks out where uh, the old Pete is parked. All of them plugged in. So then you have to plug them in or <laughs> you're not going to start it. If you forget to plug it in and you plug it in, they say at least four hours. It takes at least four hours to warm up the coolant enough just from the block heater to be able to start it. But uh, you might end up having to tow it into the shop and thaw it out that way to get it to start. So it's best always to plug in your truck in the winter time overnight if you're not going to be running it unless you can park it inside i mean that's awesome but can you imagine a shop big enough to park all these trucks inside that would be nice in a perfect world where money grew on trees but uh i haven't found that tree yet and if you find it send me a send me a private message okay it'll be between me and you i'd like to know where this money tree is i've been looking for it uh, we got that truck warming up I'm gonna come back here, check on the old Pete, see if they did get her fixed last night yet, or if they moved it, or thawed out, or whatever we wanna call it. Oh, it has moved. Nope, no, I can tell, it hasn't moved. Okay. I can tell because there's still snow at the bottom of the rims there. The old Pete's not quite ready yet, but that's okay. We have a, another truck to drive, which is actually way nicer, the Peterbilt 579. I forget what year these trucks are. It's exactly like the truck I used to drive on the highway. I'm pretty sure they're all the same year. I want to say... I want to say 2017s? 2018s, maybe? 2019s. That truck's got just under a million kilometers on it already, so that's uh, pushing, what, 600,000 miles? 200,000 kilometers a year on average if it's running if it's running hard it's two four six eight that was about five years old let's say five years it's 2022 now one two one uh, yeah probably 2017 my best guess but yeah I, I i'm happy driving this truck around i'll drive that truck as long as they want me to and then uh, they probably got some trucks in the shop right now that uh, uh, need to get out right now. Probably got loads that are waiting to leave and we need to get them out of here. So well, I'll drive the 579 as long as I need to. I like these trucks. They're... I like all trucks though. You'll probably notice that. I don't care. I'll drive them. Uh, Peterbilt, Kenworth, 
Mac, Volvo. What else do we got here? Why am I, what am I missing? International. We don't have any internationals in our yard, though. That's something I noticed. I always forget about them because we don't have any here. Uh, we got Volvos. Oh, no, there's an international right here, but that's an owner-operator. That's an owner-operator. There's a blue international right there. Uh, I haven't driven it, though, because it's not uh, one of ours. Uh, one of our guys owns it. But, uh, yeah, there's all kinds of things. I, I wish, I sort of wish we had the option of buying these European trucks over here in North America, like Scania and Man and, uh, you know, the Volvo European trucks. It would be pretty cool to be able to uh, drive them here, but they're not even available here. I've seen one on the roads here in the last 15 years of me driving. But as far as I know, I think I got a hold of the guy or someone who knows him anyways. And he had it shipped over, custom shipped over here from Europe. And he had to buy a whole bunch of permits and go through all of this extra effort and bend over backwards, do a backflip and a somersault so that the government would allow him to run it here. It was, it was a long, probably expensive process. But hey, he's the only European trucks on North American roads or one of the only ones, right? So you turn heads, you turn heads with that. The only thing is with the European trucks, the interiors are so small. But I know that you can get the longer extended bunks. And what if you get a European front end, right? Your European truck with an extended North American style wheelbase and then put a custom sleeper on there, right? Eh? Eh? I think that would turn heads. I would drive that. I think so. I mean, when you're in North America here, everybody wants to drive the classic trucks, including myself. The big Kenworth W900s, the, 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 the long-nosed Peterbilt. You want these big Merc trucks, right? But uh, having a European truck, the turning radius on them, and uh, just to be different, I think would be pretty cool. But that's a topic for a different day. I'm still waiting for my truck to warm up here, and we're going to go find a roll tight and hook up, head up north. Hopefully it's warmer there, but I bet you it's colder. Isn't she nice? I like it. I'm all hooked up to a step deck roll tight. It's the only one we had left. We have a flat roll tight over there, but it's red tag, which means it needs some repairs. All right, here she is. Let's go make sure all the lights work. Oh wait, let's fill it with air. <laughs> Almost forgot. Let's fill it with air just to make sure. Ah, there we go. Make sure there's no air leaks. There, you can hear the air compressor come on already. You can hear the air going through the line there. And it's shooting air into this trailer. It's going to fill up the airbags and release the brakes. Lights are all working here. I wonder where are we at here. There's the signal. It's hidden behind that a little bit. Oh, the signal's working, though. There is uh, premium winter air in the tires, as usual. Hopefully these brakes aren't locked. Oh, just started lifting up the bags. Good, 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 good. What do we got going on back here? Everything is as it should, as it should be. We got signals working. Yeah, everything looks good. Nice, I like it when everything works. It's a good day when everything works. I mean, we make it a good day regardless. But, oh, there's lots of snow in here. Please don't let these brakes be frozen. I want to make sure they're not flat. That's all I'm checking for. Oh, wow. A lot of snow on this side. Okay. You know, we've been complaining the last couple of years that we haven't gotten enough snow. Maybe we should have kept our mouths shut. Oh, we got lots of snow. Just gotta kick the snow off of my shoes. Otherwise, when I get in the warm truck, the snow melts, turns to water, and then my shoes are wet. You don't want wet shoes in wintertime. That's a good way to freeze your feet off. Oh, that's noisy. That's the air going into the compression tank underneath there. There's nothing to worry about. It's just not usually that loud, but hey. I don't like waking up on cold mornings either. I understand.
These guys over here are very busy. There's a dump truck there. There's a front end loader behind me there. You probably can't see it in my mirror. It's back there. They're very busy bringing snow from there to there. Serious stuff. <laughs> I don't know why they didn't just pile it back there in the first place. I guess that would be difficult to do because they piled it all in like one part of the parking lot way over there. Now they're bringing it now. Now they're loading it back up into trucks and they're piling it all back on the other side of the fence over there. Wait one second for this container guy to get out of my way here. You'll be able to see. Oh, they got big piles back there already too. Look at that. Oh, there's another dump truck there. So they've cleared this whole yard and put it into a big pile over there. You see? Now they're moving that pile. I mean, it gives you something to do, right? When you run out of snow to clear, you, uh, well, you just start moving the piles. You move that pile from there to over there. And then tomorrow, you move that pile from over there back over there. See? Keeps you busy. You got to keep moving, remember? That's our secret to how we stay warm up here. You have to keep working. And when you run out of work, you just make up work to do. Just move the snow around. Just keep moving, otherwise you're gonna freeze and die. So this is a, a big uh, deja vu for us. It's the exact same thing as we did yesterday, except yesterday we loaded up a flatbed in the morning, and this morning we loaded up a step deck, but with the exact same stuff at the exact same place. And now we're back here at the exact same place with another van behind us. <laughs> Loading this up, bringing it back to the yard, and that's probably gonna be my day. Almost exactly the same as yesterday. But uh, this truck though, you want to see it again? I showed it to you yesterday. May as well show it to you again. Uh, other than the Kenworth T680s. Actually, you know, I, I was going to say this is my favorite truck. I spent a lot of time in uh, 3101, which is exactly like this truck. And they're very comfortable and smooth to drive. I was going to say this was one of my favorite trucks, but I say that about every truck I'm in. I mean, it's it's not that hard to impress me, it's just as long as it goes, it's got lots of room, looks good. Oh, and there they go, they're loading up that snow. Oh, there's another big pile back there behind them. They bring that snow and they're gonna put it over there. What's even more funny about that is I talked to some people who work in that building, uh, another not where I was going, but they were outside as well. And they were looking at those guys asking the same questions as me. And we're sort of chuckling to ourselves. Apparently, like every two days, they move the snow from one part of the yard to another part of the yard and they can't figure it out either. We just came to the conclusion they must just be making themselves look busy. I don't know. Maybe there's a reason to it. <laughs> Maybe it's because the best explanation I can come up with is that they clear the yard as fast as possible because it's a very busy yard. There's like, what, hundreds of docks there, right? So you have to have it clear so that the trucks can get in and do their cross docking. That's so the companies can get in there and it's a big place. So what I think happened is they get in there and just clear it all as fast as they can. Just get the snow out of the way. And just whichever way they can, put it anywhere they can, just get it out of the way. Then once they have it all clear, then they start managing it into bigger piles. They sort of take all the snow from this side, put it into one big pile on this side, take all the snow from that side, put it onto one big pile on that side. And then after that, they come and then they move those piles all into one big pile. And then they call in the dump trucks. And the dump trucks come in one day and they move that whole big pile, all the snow from the whole yard to where it's actually supposed to be behind the fence where it's completely out of the way so that they have their full yard back again. So this seems like this is like a four day process. And maybe that's just the way they do that. That's, that's the, the best explanation I can come up with in my mind. And that would sort of make sense. I don't know if it needs four days. I can understand how they just want to get it out of the way the first day, just get it out of the way so we can like, open our business, right? And get our trucks in and out. I would just say, do everything else the same day or the next day. But maybe there's different logistics in it. Maybe they need different equipment for different drugs. Ah, <laughs> I just thought it was... Ah, I thought it was funny. We're talking about... I don't know what's going on. 
I'm not a snow clearing guy. That's not my, it's not my role. But I do appreciate the work they're doing because without them clearing the snow, it would be very difficult for me to do my job. So, who am I to question their ways? Right, Chevy? Right, Chevy? Hey, come here. Come here. Everyone wants to say hi to you. Come here. Stretch it out, buddy. Come here. Come on up here. There you go. What do you want to say to the good people? What do you want to say to the good people? Hi. Uh, I was sleeping. I was having a good dream. Anyway. The fridge is that way. That's where the treats are. If you were wondering, that's where they keep the treats. That's... Hmm. Chevy, you want a treat? Yeah? Oh, okay. Talk me into it. Talk me in. How about you, Diesel? Diesel, you want a treat? Who else wants a treat? Hey! I'm gonna give you a treat. Watch this. All I gotta do is rustle with that. They'll all come running. Oh, they're already here. Hey, guys. <laughs> is that the one, Chevy? That's the one. Yeah. Okay. All right, one sec. Let's, let's uh, put this down here. Oh, hey. Hey, hi, guys. What's up? Getting some traits. Okay. We're going to put this. All right. These are uh, freeze-dried liver. Mmm. Sit. All right, boy. Careful, buddy. Don't just swallow it. You gotta chew it. Savor it. Dizu. He always takes it so gently. Big Frank. Why do you grab it so hard? I'm not... scared someone's gonna steal it. That's a big one, Wiener. Chew it. Chew it. He didn't chew it. That's why I don't give you those big ones usually, man. It freaks me out. You guys happy now? No, you want more? That's all you get for now. I'm cheap, okay? Gotta save some for later. This delicious beef liver. Mmm. Mmm. At least they don't gotta worry about me stealing any of their treats. <gasps> Thanks for hanging out with us today, everybody. It was a good day. I'm just uh, closing this up here on the weekend. Hope you have a good one. Take care, and uh, we'll see you tomorrow.